Hello and welcome to Lost Love Chronicles. How dare you beat him like that? He is a very important man and a lot more man than you can ever be. Dear listeners, today we bring the story of a woman who cheated on her husband and got catfished and robbed in return. Dear subscribers, we have crossed 2,500 subscribers and are racing towards our first 3,000 subscribers. Please hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon for notifications for our latest story. Share a like if you like this story. Let's start with the story. I was 20 years old, and Amber was 21 when we crossed paths during a visit to a friend's house from college. Our connection began after finishing a project together, and we all enjoyed a nice dinner. After a year of dating, we got married shortly after graduating from college. The start was challenging as we searched for jobs and navigated financial constraints. Eventually, I secured a well-paying job matching my skills, and Amber found success in her career. As our married life stabilized, thoughts of starting a family emerged. Amber initially dreamed of having a son and a daughter but expressed concerns about health issues. Despite careful preparation for pregnancy, including courses and consultations, Amber unexpectedly changed her mind, suggesting we focus on improving our living conditions first. I agreed with her perspective, albeit surprised by the abrupt shift. Subsequently, a series of peculiar events unfolded, sparking suspicions in my mind. I began to notice changes in my wife's behavior. She spent a lot of time on social media, using her work laptop and phone, both password protected. Miscommunications arose, and secrets surfaced. While it didn't affect our everyday life, it took a toll on our sex life. She often came home late, exhausted, and buried herself in work on her laptop. Concerned, I decided to address the issue openly, hoping for a calm conversation. Instead, it turned into a heated argument, with accusations that I didn't respect her dedication to work. The truth, however, surfaced later and had nothing to do with her job. One day, I decided to surprise my wife by leaving work early on her day off. I bought flowers and planned to invite her to a restaurant for a relaxed conversation. However, as I entered the apartment, it was seen straight out of a bad B movie. I caught Amber engaging in intimate activities with another man in the kitchen. Shocked and furious, I threw the bouquet and attacked them. In the midst of the confrontation, I learned that my wife intended to leave me for the stranger who spoke English poorly with a strong accent. He claimed to have loved her for a long time and had come to take her to Mexico. Evaluating the situation, he seemed over 40, objectively unattractive but expensively dressed, another affluent man pursuing a younger woman. Things began to make sense when I recalled finding Spanish language books in her underwear drawer during a cleaning session. While initially surprising, it now seemed clear that she had been learning Spanish, possibly with the intention of starting a new life with this man in a Spanish-speaking country. Now that the truth was laid bare, I realized the extent of my wife's secret life, the clandestine correspondences, the foreign language textbooks, all hidden because of her lover. I felt like a fool for not catching on sooner. As it turned out, they were waiting for me to return from work that evening, ready to announce their year-long exchange of letters and a nearly month-long secret relationship. My wife explained that she loved this man deeply, having met him online. According to her, he was a good, kind, polite, well-mannered, and chivalrous Mexican, seemingly better than me in every way. She told me that he owns a big business in Mexico. The plan was for her to go to Mexico with him, specifically to Playa del Carmen. Divorce papers were allegedly already prepared, and she had even signed them. She claimed her bags were packed with essentials, as her lover promised to buy her everything new. Their flight was scheduled in two weeks, with plane tickets already purchased. In response to this shocking revelation, I couldn't contain my anger and unleashed a series of punches to the Mexican's stomach, prompting him to hastily flee the house. What astonished me even more was Amber's audacity as she scolded me for such behavior. Without saying a word, 
I grabbed her by the hair and pushed her onto the street, slamming the door in her face. Soon after, her I kicked her packed suitcases as well. When she threatened to call the police, I felt no remorse, instead, I barely held back and smacked her across her face. I wasted no time and called work, requesting a week off at my own expense. I honestly informed my boss about the divorce, and he understood the gravity of the situation. Devastated by the revelation of my wife's betrayal, I went to the store, diverting the money I had set aside for a restaurant to purchase copious amounts of alcohol and food. For three days, I drowned my sorrows, spending most of my time lying at home in a state of numbness. It was challenging to focus on anything when my mind was consumed by the recent events. By the end of my self-imposed hiatus, I reluctantly accepted that my marriage had come to an abrupt end. Although I felt the ache in my heart from this unexpected conclusion, it seemed preferable to an endless spiral of deceit. Just when I thought my story had reached its bitter end, life had more twists in store. Three weeks after kicking out my wife and her lover, I returned home from work, mechanically ate dinner, and slumped on the couch with a beer bottle, hoping to find solace in some mindless TV. Suddenly, the doorbell rang, and there, standing on the threshold of my house, was my estranged wife. She insisted that we needed to talk urgently and seriously. With a bitter satisfaction, I invited her in, saying we could indeed have a conversation. My glee was hard to put into words. However, her revelation was unexpected. It turned out that the Mexican, who had stolen my wife's heart, had not only targeted her in America but had seven other women in his sights. Astonishingly, he chose a 19-year-old girl over my wife and flew off to Mexico with her, leaving Amber robbed of all her money, savings, and expensive jewelry. The tables had turned, and I found myself caught in a bizarre twist of fate. My wife returned to her mom's and spent a week reflecting on our life together. During this time, she claimed to have realized the depth of her mistake, shedding fake tears as she confessed her love for me. She expressed regret for her actions, pleaded for forgiveness, and promised to work on herself, vowing that such a betrayal would never recur. She even expressed a desire to have children with me and agreed to any conditions I set. However, I played alone, telling her to give me three weeks to think about it, pretending that I had already signed the divorce papers. I concocted a story about other women coming over to my place, just to see the shock on her face. When she returned three weeks later, believing we might still have a chance, I revealed that I was steadfast in my decision to divorce. Despite her genuine tears, I couldn't muster any tender feelings for her. The betrayal and deceit had left an irreparable mark. The divorce brought me relief and a sense of freedom. With my grandmother's apartment still in my possession, I enjoyed solitude. Amber persisted in seeking forgiveness, perhaps hoping for a reconciliation, but it never materialized. She eventually moved back in with her parents, and our communication ceased entirely. I haven't thought much about how she's living now, as I focus on myself and enjoy the freedom of youth. That's the end of the story. If you enjoyed it, feel free to share your thoughts in the comments. Thank you for being here with us. Dear listener, if you have reached this far please click on the subscribe button. It will be a great help.